absolute pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation uh, from the chemistry department to speak with us. And we are delighted to have you and many congratulations on your achievements to date and your pioneering work in the area of space chemistry, which we're delighted to hear more about later on. And uh, my name is Nazila Kamali. I'm a faculty member here in the department and I'm one of the co-EDI directors. So EDI stands for Equality, Diversity and Inclusion. And as part of the EDI activities in the department, we have recently uh, uh, kicked off an initiative called ICHEM. And ICHEM stands for Inclusive Chemistry. We very much believe in chemistry uh, to be an inclusive uh, uh, research field and we would like ICHEM to promote uh, uh, the participation of individuals from a wide and diverse background um, in order to be able to study and take part in the practice of chemistry. And it, once again, we're delighted to have you here today. And so as an esteemed female academic, we would like to start off by asking you um, to tell us a little bit about your background and, and why you decided to study chemistry. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. It's uh, you, really it's a, a great pleasure mm -hmm. to be here. It's uh, my first time at this campus and it's, uh, it's a very impressive campus. Thank you. And it offers lots of opportunities, I think, also uh, for, for meeting people and for the, the goals that you are trying to reach in terms of inclusion. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so uh, my own background is uh, rather unusual. <laughs> uh, indeed, I started studying chemistry and it was simply because I had a very good high school teacher in chemistry high school teachers are so important mm -hmm. that in contrast, I had not such a good physics teacher. <laughs> and it was not until I got to the university that I discovered that, oh, physics is actually also nice. <laughs> and so I took sort of chemical physics mm -hmm. where I had a lot of physics courses and, and mm -hmm. chemistry uh, mm -hmm. courses. Um, and uh, I went into the, the quantum chemistry, the theoretical chemistry uh, direction, and I enjoyed that very much. And uh, I really wanted to also continue in that. Mm -hmm. um, but then the professor had died, mm -hmm. and um, as often goes mm -hmm. in university, <laughs> uh, there was a big discussion about the succession, and it was clear that there was not going to be a successor for quite some time. And mm -hmm. so they said to me that, oh, I mean, you better go and look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And it was only then that my then boyfriend and now husband he had just taken a course in astronomy on the interstellar space, the space between the stars, and he had heard that there were molecules there. He said, gosh, isn't that something for you? <laughs> <laughs> and one thing led uh, to another, and uh, I was introduced to the world expert at Harvard and uh, went there for some time to learn about uh, interstellar chemistry. And uh, yeah. Since then, uh, my mm -hmm. career has taken a totally different uh, mm -hmm. direction. That's wonderful. It's great to see uh, such an open-minded approach to your research career. And uh, as a female scientist, what would you say were your greatest obstacles, perhaps, along your career? Well, I think my greatest obstacle was actually when I was told, <laughs> mm. sorry, even though you have the very highest grades, uh, there is no position for you here mm. to continue. Mm. Um, and then saying like, okay, where do I go now? Yeah. Um, in the end, it worked out all right. And it worked, even, worked out even better than I could have uh, expected. Mm -hmm. So it is actually good to be forced at some stage to, mm -hmm. to have to look somewhere else and not say, okay, my career goes from A to B to C to D. It's, it's, it's good to, to know that it can take a totally different route. Um, but at the time, of course, it was very hard. And uh, uh, it was really the support both of my family and of the professors there that uh, wanted to make it happen and, uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. worked very hard uh, to, to make it happen. <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, you, you, you alluded to this sort of like your career is not necessarily A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. And as female academics, perhaps sometimes we have to meet personal and family related challenges. Uh, do you think you had, you, did you have to meet such challenges along your path? And if so, how did you deal with it? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, in our case, the, the hardest was to uh, the two body problem mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, of having two uh, successful researchers mm -hmm. that uh, we wanted to have, um, of course, positions mm -hmm. in, the same, uh, in the same location. And when we went uh, from my home university, Leiden, 
Uh, we went to postdocs. Um, uh, I had a fellowship at Harvard. My husband had one at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton. Uh, at that time, we also had options to be in one place, but we had gotten advice from um, one of our mentors who said, early on in your career, take the steepest route, mm -hmm. because that determines where you will end up eventually. Mm -hmm. So we took the hardship of uh, living in two places and commuting between Harvard and Princeton, which was uh, not the easiest <laughs> commute. Really um, but uh, uh, it worked out. And af but after two and a half years, we said, oh, never again. <laughs> That's, uh, and from then on, we, we really looked always in uh, um, yeah, positions in uh, two positions in the same place. Uh, even if it sometimes meant that, you know, one place was better for one of us and the other place was better for the other. And uh, we sort of alternated that so to make sure that we could both uh, progress mm. in the careers. That's fantastic. And uh, may I ask along your career, have you uh, felt like you had great female role models in place? And um, if so, how, how did they inspire you to continue with your research career? Yeah, I, I think in my case, that was not so much mm. uh, the, 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 uh, the situation, simply also because there were very few <laughs> of them. Uh, there were certainly in quantum chemistry when I was still a master's student. Uh, there was one female professor in Germany, actually, which doesn't have that many female professors to start with. Uh, so she was certainly an inspiration uh, then and uh, an example mm -hmm. uh, that you could think of. But um, for me personally, it, that hasn't played such a big role. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like that's uh, very much dependent on the field of research that you are in, where you are more likely to find um, uh, less women, uh, you know, less women taking it back all the way to, to STEM and, in, and, and so on. So do you feel that um, that may have had a part to play with it, being a physical science that you were engaged with? Well, certainly when I was in, uh, in, in college, um, I was the only female in the, <laughs> mm -hmm. in the, in the college, uh, in, the, in the lectures. Mm -hmm. um, but that also had advantages. It had mm -hmm. advantages that you were noticed. So right. if you were you know, doing a decent mm -hmm. job on the courses, then uh, the professors would note you and that would actually be a plus rather than a minus. Um, so that is at least how I have experienced mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I know that may not be the same for everybody, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, it can also be an advantage. Of mm -hmm. course, the situation has completely changed now. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, if we look certainly in my field with, of, of astrophysics, which has always traditionally had more women um, than, uh, say, the, the physics or the mathematics, mm -hmm. um, uh, that is a, a very different situation now. Mm -hmm. that, and, and what would you say is the sort of status quo of, of, of female participation in your field right now on an international scale? And how would you like to see that sort of change and, and move towards a more positive outcome? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say it is already quite positive. If yes. I look at uh, the moments at uh, um, even worldwide in terms of PhD students mm -hmm. and postdocs, we are sort of at 35 percent, 40 percent. Mm -hmm. um, of course, some countries have more, mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. countries have less. Mm -hmm. And as a former president of the International Astronomical Union, we actually had 100 countries to look after mm -hmm. and uh, look at the statistics in each of these countries mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and try to, to stimulate uh, uh, all of them to, uh, to, to improve, and especially mm -hmm. those that were at sort of the low fractions. Um, but if I you know, restrict it to Europe, uh, then we see clearly um, an increase um, at the PhD to the postdoc level. Uh, junior faculty has also increased. So you see now that that, that cohort is sort of moving now into faculty mm -hmm. positions. And at that stage, we don't see a leaky pipeline, at least not in our, um, mm -hmm. um, in our country. So, um, so there we are now typically at 25% uh, female um, um, junior professors. I mean, once you get to the very senior levels, again, it takes some time mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for that cohort to progress there. But it, it's coming and it's uh, it's already getting... Um, mm -hmm. That's fantastic to hear. There. Yes, absolutely. And I think when we look at the statistics, we also make the same conclusions yes. that up to the 
postdoctoral well, level well. and uh, earlier junior faculty, our numbers are almost balanced yeah. um, in, in, in several disciplines. Yeah, and so I guess this leads me to my next question that there is a leaky pipeline and uh, you mentioned it's a matter of time that we catch up. And so in terms of the leaky pipeline, what would you say you see as the biggest challenge right now and how can we meet this challenge going forward? Yeah, so I think there's a, definitely a leaky pipeline in the sort of almost a high school level mm -hmm. as to, uh, um, you know, getting people into sciences. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about astrophysics or mm -hmm. chemistry, but let's let's talk about science in, yeah. in general. Uh, there, I think mm -hmm. uh, there's there's improvement there to be done to, to get more into the, the sciences in general. Um, and then it's basically uh, almost at the sort of the, from the first postdoc to the second postdoc, uh, making sure that they have enough confidence that they really apply to the mm -hmm. faculty positions and mm -hmm. uh, have a, a, a good enough uh, mm -hmm. resume to, <laughs> yes. to be com competitive there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely, that's interesting to hear, and this this concept of having um, a role model and a mentor yeah. to especially build the confidence in, in, in young female yeah. academics yeah. To, to push them to apply for positions is, is a really um, fantastic approach. So um, I I'm sure you heard about uh, unconscious bias. Yeah. <laughs> um, what are your views on um, unconscious <coughs> bias, and 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 what are the sort of positive changes again that we could take to minimize this this sort of um, concept in in, in gender-based um, uh, uh, issues and activities in research. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly in my field of astrophysics, uh, some steps have been taken, especially in proposals. Um, we depend, at least if you're an observational astronomer, <clears throat> you depend a lot on uh, uh, getting observing time, and those that is very competitive. I mean, some of the biggest telescopes are oversubscribed by factors of 5 to 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, to make sure that there is no bias whatsoever, we have now moved to a system of uh, double blind mm -hmm. reviews. So basically, um, you know, all names are removed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything, uh, the, the, also the panel doesn't know who mm -hmm. that is. We don't know who the panel is, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and that of course has, uh, has helped in, uh, um, and that's also what you see in the statistics that there was, just, there was a small bias, but it was not very large, and then now you see that it has mm -hmm. been completely uh, removed. And, that's really yeah, interesting. That's, yeah. that's a very yeah. inspirational um, <coughs> uh, approach, actually, to to remove the gender identification. That's completely, yeah. yeah yes, yeah. From, from these kinds of competitive... But also, I mean, this, these are worldwide mm -hmm. uh, competitions because mm -hmm. uh, one of the facilities that I will talk about, mm -hmm. the Atacama Large Millimeter Ray, that's a worldwide project in which East Asia um, North America and Europe all compete for the for the time on it. They are all partners in the uh, in the project, um, and uh, in this way, really, you know, it also um, works on the other part of inclusiveness, which is not just gender but also nationalities. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And so, uh, coming towards the end of our interview, I, I had a few questions <laughs> left and. Uh, one question is, is, is a little bit open-ended in the sense that um, looking back on your career and also looking at the sort of, you know, where we are on a, on a global scale, um, what would you say, you know, is, is, is one thing that you would change in approach? Obviously, you've, you've already discussed um, blinding applications and competitive um, outcomes. What else could you, um, you know, I, I would make change? a plea... I would make a plea to the funding agencies mm -hmm. to be more flexible with mm -hmm. the grants. And these days, it's so much on, you know, one specific grant for one thing. I've been fortunate in my career to have <coughs> several large grants mm -hmm. that I could spend in the way that I would like you know, for multiple positions. And what I've done quite a number of times is when I see a promising female researcher, but sort of needing one extra year <laughs> to gain the confidence or to get a few more publications to make her competitive in the application research. I could just do that. I could just mm -hmm. give her that extra year. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that kind of flexibility that we're 
lacking in so much of the funding these days. That so uh, that would be my plea. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Okay. That's that's absolutely really um, inspirational yeah. lessons learned there for sure. And uh, finally, I'd like to know um, if you have any words of wisdom for younger female academics starting out their career in chemistry and physical sciences. Um, the floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a few things that I usually tell to, uh, to students. Um, the first is be passionate about mm -hmm. what you do. Uh, whatever it is that you do, be passionate about mm -hmm. it because that will also help you in the in the longer term. If you're not passionate about your work, uh, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, then it makes it much harder and mm -hmm. puts also much more stress on you. Mm -hmm. um, the second part is um, make sure you excel in one thing. Don't mm -hmm. try to do everything at sort of a, an, an average level. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you're excelling in one aspect that uh, get you, you know, recognized. Um, so that is also very important. Uh, it can be a researcher result, but it can also be something technical. You know, mm -hmm. you have written a computer program that is mm -hmm. <laughs> unique, yes. or you have developed a device that is unique. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just make sure you're the world's expert in one, uh, one aspect. Um, and uh, the third part is, is basically uh, have an open mind. Yeah, look, look across borders. Look, look to other opportunities, um, be open for, you know, when something comes on your path that you hadn't expected and don't think that mm, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. Try it out. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can change your career entirely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been really absolutely a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank and you. good luck with all the very important work that you're doing here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>